This video is brought to you by Avid Armor. Avid Armor makes high quality vacuum sealers that are perfect for keeping your wild game meat fresher for longer. I use mine for wild mushrooms, fresh produce, and so much more. If you're interested in learning more, there's a link in the description box down below. Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Ali D'Andrea. Today I am going to show you how to break down the hindquarter of a deer. This process will also work for other hooved game animals like elk, antelope, even moose. All of the muscle structure is essentially the same, it's just the size that's different, but today you'll see me demonstrating on this beautiful white-tailed doe hindquarter. Now, I am in Florida. This is a Florida whitetail. Florida whitetail are smaller than whitetail in other parts of the country, so things, you know, will be just a little more miniature on this guy, but a little easier for me to handle and manage and film, so you will get a very up-close view on how to break down the hindquarter. I'll also talk through some things you need to be really careful of. There is a gland in here that you really wanna make sure that you remove or else it's going to affect the flavor of the meat. I'll also talk about how I like to cook and prepare each different cut and we'll dive into it. This is going to be a very jam packed video. So let's jump right in. First thing you need when butchering any type of meat is the proper knife. This is something that I overlooked for years and years and years and I didn't think it mattered, but having a good boning knife will make your butchering job a lot easier. This one I believe is a six inch boning knife. Anything from six to eight inches will work very well. Let's talk about the hindquarter itself. The hindquarter is some of the most exciting meat on a wild game animal because there's a lot of diversity here. There's a lot going on. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. What you're looking at here is the outside of the leg. When we flip it over, this is the inside and up here, there's the ball joint and this is where the pelvis is. The front of the deer is over here. This is the inside of the thigh. First thing we want to do is remove this bottom portion called the shank. So just feeling with your fingers and visually seeing where the white meets the red meat, that is where you want to cut. So take your knife, I'm gonna stand up here. So work your knife around that meat and down along that bone. I'm continuing to trace the line where the white meets the pink. That cut released this top piece of meat here and I'm going to use my fingers to break that fascia apart like that. I can use my knife to cut through there. And this will expose one of the larger portions of meat that go down onto that shank. We don't want to include this top flap of meat. So you wanna remove that, peel it back a little bit so that you can see where this muscle comes down. Now I'll flip this over. And in through here, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to cut along where this seam is. I don't want this top portion of muscle included down here on the shank. So I'm going to cut right through that fascia. Now on the inside, same thing. I'm going to continue around and then cut right along the line where the white portion of the bone in the connective tissue meets the meat. Back along to the back, just kind of cut down. Now that I've removed these top muscles away from the bone, I can go down in here and cut at the knee joint. This just takes some feeling with your knife to get into the joints properly. The more that you do this, the easier it will come, the easier it will become. Folks who are Professional butchers can get through this in like two seconds. Um, it takes me a little bit longer, but it's really just about feeling for where that joint is and getting your knife in there and just breaking it apart. Okay. 
All right, so that bone, that bone has detached. And now I'm just going to cut the rest of this shank meat off of that femur bone. So I'm running my knife blade along the femur bone and cutting where that meat attaches. Like that. Beautiful. I like to keep my shanks bone in just like this for braising. Shank meat is very tough. It is not tender whatsoever. So your best options with the shank meat is to grind it, which you would just cut all the meat away from the bone. Cut away that hard tendon right there. Save the bones for stock if you like to make stock, but then just grind the rest of the meat. I think that they are so fabulous braised, so that is my preferred method. Moving on. Next step, we are going to remove the femur bone. And to do this, we are going to cut along the seams on the inside of the leg. Cut along those natural seam lines all the way down to the bone. Use your knife tip and run it along the bone. Like you're almost scraping the meat off the bone, really. So you'll use the seam to get to the bone. And then once you get to the bone, there's no seam to follow. It's just the curvature of the bone. And you'll work all the way around it, all the way up at the head. This is one of the moments where a boning knife really is very valuable because of the shape of the blade and how thin it is at the tip and the flexibility of it. It allows you to really work in to remove the meat from the bone efficiently and easily. There we go. All right. So just like that. Oh, no, like that. Just like that, we've removed the bone. This cut right here is called the top round. Some people also refer to it as the inside round. It is one of the most tender cuts from the entire hindquarter. This is one that you really want to pay attention to and that you really want to be sacred with and make sure that you're treating it with as much care and love as possible. There is some work in the field ahead of time that you can do to better take care of this cut of meat. The top round is located on the inside of the pelvis. So right where you're splitting the deer open when you're doing your gut job. Anytime you can avoid splitting open the pelvis during the gutting process, you are going to save as much of this top round as possible and you'll be very happy that you did when it comes time to eat it because it is just a wonderful, fabulous cut of meat. Let's remove this guy. There is a muscle group on top of the top round that I cut away and save for grind. It is too small, in my opinion, um, for anything else. So I'm going to cut this away. This right here, set that aside. Ooh, look at the top round taking shape. I'll continue to peel her open. Ba -ba -ba -da. And there she is. That 
right there is the beautiful, beautiful top round. Because the top round is a more tender cut of meat, you can get away with some hotter, faster cooking methods that you can't with other roasts from the hind quarter. That's what really makes the top round so special. So for me, I love to use my top round roast for stir fries. I slice it really, really thin. Of course, you can still use it as pot roast and hell, you can even grind it. Use the meat however you will eat it. We are going to continue to break this boy apart. We are about to cut out the dirty, dirty gland. So pay attention. This is the femoral artery. We are just going to cut that. We don't want that in there. Um, so our top round was here. Take a look at what's happening here. There is some nasty stuff going on right in here. And so naturally you would know to cut this away because this is you know, not something that you wanna eat. But right in here, there is a gland that you don't even want your knife to cut through. Like you wanna be careful when you're cutting around this so that you don't cut directly through the gland. Um, but I'm going to remove this here. It's a chunk of fat that is located on the inside of the hindquarter. That right there is a gland located within all of this fat. If you slice through that and then you continue to cut through your meat, you're going to be spreading around some nasty, nasty flavor. This is where butchering your deer at home is such a game changer. If you don't have a good butcher, a butcher will grind the entire hindquarter, for example, without removing these glands. Now, if you got a good butcher, they will. But some butchers won't because it takes more time to break apart everything like this. Be aware that that is there and make sure that you cut it out and remove it. Now, we have two muscle groups that are beginning to show themselves here. We've got the eye of round right here, which we'll go ahead and cut away. And the eye of round looks like a tenderloin. It's kind of deceiving because you're like, oh, that's going to be just as tender as the tenderloin, but it's not. Typically does and cows, so female deer and elk, are going to be a much more pleasant eating experience than an older, mature, stinky buck or bull. So if you have an eye of round from a doe, you can still use it in stir fries, you can still roast it, and it will still be tender. All right, and it continues. I'm cutting along the seams between this big muscle group and this muscle group over here. So this is the bottom round that I'm cutting away. Okay, check out this beauty. This beauty is the bottom round. And this, if you remember, was the outside of the leg. So the bottom round is not a very tender cut of meat. I would not recommend using it for stir fries or anything like that. You wanna cook this low and slow. You can also use it to make jerky. I forgot to mention that with the other cuts as well, but the eye of round and top round are both great options for jerky if you love jerky. The bottom round, in my opinion, is the best of them all for jerky because it's not as tender, so you're not like wasting the tender potential of it, you know what I mean? It cuts really beautiful into jerky. I'll make another video on how I like to make jerky from the bottom round specifically because you can cut it into these really beautiful fall apart pieces. The bottom round is also great for slow roasting. Use it in your stews, or again, if you like grind meat, grind her up. We're left here with the final three cuts of meat. We have our sirloin tip, which is this football shaped roast right here. Then we have the tri-tip, which is a muscle group that holds on to the front of the sirloin tip. And then up top, we have our sirloin butt. So let's remove the tri-tip from our sirloin tip. And to do that, I'm just going to follow the seam.
Okay. Right here. This is our sirloin tip. This is a roast. There are a couple different muscle groups that comprise the sirloin tip. This is not a tender cut of meat. You, in my opinion, you always want to roast this or cook it very slow. Some people do use it for steaks, but I'm not into that at all. I would definitely recommend slow roasting this guy. I have a pot roast recipe that I wish I could share with you guys already, but it's going in my cookbook that will be out in, at this point, like about a year. But I would recommend cooking this as a stew or pot roast. Then we have our, cut those two. This is the tri-tip on my white-tailed deer. I always choose to grind this. The sirloin butt comes from the very top of the hind quarter, like all the way on the back of the animal, which makes it very, very tender. It's really awkwardly shaped and not really anything on a deer that you could cut steaks from, but you can slice it into thin little strips and use it as stir fry because it is tender. You can make a lot of different things. When I say stir fry, I just mean it can handle some hotter, faster cooking methods compared to like the sirloin tip, which needs slow, long roasting. You can even, you can like feel the difference, how this is tender. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. Meat from a doe in particular is really, really incredible. So this process of butchering the animal and taking care of every cut and putting my love and heart into this is, so fulfilling and it makes me really happy to be able to share that with other people. And it's been a really long process to learn all of this and get to this point. I've been hunting now for like eight years, maybe even more if you consider before I was the one with the weapon in my hand. No matter how you choose to butcher your meat and fabricate your meat and cook it, as long as you're finding ways to enjoy it, like that is just the coolest part of it all. Hunting for food and hunting to sustain yourself and your family, it, it's hard. Like deer meat doesn't always taste good and it takes a long time and a lot of patience and practice to understand how to work with the meat. And it's not something that you're taught in school. Um, maybe you're taught by your parents if you have some really cool parents, but otherwise <laughs> you got to learn it on your own. Alrighty, it's the next day and it is time to vacuum seal this meat. This bad boy is the Avid Armor GS41. It's part of their guide series. It's a commercial grade chamber vacuum sealer. Avid Armor makes a lot of different types of vacuum sealers. I have one of their smaller like home kitchen vacuum sealers, but this bad boy is brand spanking new. This will be my first time testing this baby out, so I'm really excited about it. My bag is in a roll. I'm going to cut the bags to size. And you always want your bags to be a little bit bigger than you think. Um, having too much headspace is better than not having enough. When you cut the bags from the roll, it's just an open tube, so you need to seal one side before you put your meat in. This guy automatically starts as soon as you shut the lid. And because I'm not vacuuming, I'm gonna skip the vacuum cycle. Now it's sealing, and then this will automatically open when it's done. Just like that a beautiful double bar seal. First thing I pulled out of the cooler was this, a beautiful top round roast. Lots of headspace. Technically you want at least three inches of headspace. You always want to dry the inside of the bag where the seal bar is to make sure that you get a, a good contact seal the whole way across. There she is. We've got good connection on the seal bar. I just have a towel in here to add a little extra volume so that this seals down nice and tight. I'll just shut this. Automatically begins. There's the vacuum. Oh, I love that. It's so cool. Boop. <laughs> and look at that. That is beautiful. Oh my. That is a perfectly sealed white tail top round. So good. I'm so happy that I filled my first Florida deer tag. It feels like, I don't know, like a rite of passage into us buying a house here and like this being our home. 
and the meat on this deer is so beautiful and so incredible. I just feel really happy and I'm happy to share this with all of you. So that is it. I'm going to keep vacuum sealing the rest of my meat and other than that, I will see you guys in the next one.